75 participants okay should we start okay ma'am we can so today we'll be discussing about general anatomy of female reproductive system uh, this is a brief uh, revision of what you all have studied in your basic classes uh, so this is uh, more about clinical application of the general anatomy of female reproductive system okay so female reproductive system can be divided into external and internal genitalia in external genitalia uh, we have uh, vulva it refers to those parts that are visible externally and the vulva includes mons pubis labia majora labia minora clitoris urethral opening vaginal opening and perineum however there can be individual differences in the size coloration shape of the external genitalia which we all know okay so this is the picture of the external genitalia this is the mons pubis this is labia majora this is labia minora this is clit and this vulva okay which has which consists of this vulval opening that is vaginal opening and this is the ureter orifice we will be discussing each and every one in detail so coming to the first part of the external genitalia mons pubis mons pubis it is a triangular mouth subcutaneous adipose tissue that covers the pubic bone uh, its function is basically to protect the pubic symphysis and in uh, adolescence uh, the sex hormones it triggers the growth of the pubic hair in the mons pubis and we all know that the hair varies in coarseness curliness amount color and thickness so this is the uh, mons pubis and it is covered by the hair coarse hair okay next uh, uh, part of the external genitalia is the labia majora uh, it is also referred to as the outer lips and there are two prominent longitudinal cutaneous folds that extend downward and backward from the mons pubis to the perineum okay Uh, and they join medially forming anteriorly the anterior commissure and posteriorly the posterior commissure it has two surfaces the outer surface which is pigmented and it's covered by strong um, hair, crisp hairs and uh, inner uh, it has uh, smooth and it visits with large perineal large sebaceous follicles Uh, and in between there are uh, various amount of uh, areolar tissues and fats and it is homologous to uh, scrotum in male and uh, another clinical implication of this labia majora is that the round ligament it terminates at the upper border so we can see the picture the last one i've showed you see this is the uh, labia majora anteriorly it forms the anterior commissure and posteriorly it forms the posterior commissure and uh, inside it has uh, smooth uh, areolar tissues okay it is covered with fat and outer it is covered with hair okay and in upper border upper border the round ligament terminates next is the labia minora this is the labia minora it is also referred to as the inner lips okay it has Uh, two hairless skin folds these are two hairless skin folds and it is made up of erectile tissue okay this labia majora is not sensitive but this labia minora is very sensitive as it contains the erectile connective tissues it is located inside the labia majora and it is very sensitive it splits anteriorly to cover the clitoris forming the uh, prepuce and posteriorly forming the frenulum and in post in uh, posterior portion there is forchet the posterior part of the labia uh, minora it forms the forchet okay and in between the forchet and the uh, fossa uh, in between the forchet and this vaginal orifice there is the fossa navicularis this portion is known as the fossa navicularis clear next is the clitoris okay clitoris clitoris it is a visible button like structures uh, it is in front of the urethral opening and it is present in the junction of the labia minora 
uh, above the urethral opening it consists of glands body and two pruras okay i'll show you it consists of the glands it consists of the glands body and two pruras okay and it is richly supplied by nerves and it is analogous to penis in male and it is attached to the symphysis pubis by the suspensory ligament next is the vaginal opening or the introitus it is a part of the vulva between the labia minora and the i'll show you the picture this is the this is the introitus or the vaginal opening it is a part of the vulva between the labia minora uh, in which there is opening of the urethral opening and the vaginal opening okay uh, the edge is marked by the hart's line this is known as the hart's line and opening may be covered by a thin sheath called hymen it is page present in nulliparous sexually inactive people and the structures opening in the, the vest this is the vestibule uh, we'll be asking about what are the structures opening in vestibule and we have to know it the structures opening in vestibule are anteriorly urethral opening posteriorly vaginal opening which includes hymen and there is on lateral side there are opening of the bartholin's duct and in uh para uh, urethral region you have skin stuck or para urethral ducts okay so these are the structures which open in the uh, vagina okay see opening of the bartholin glands and this is the urethra and this is the skin scan or para urethral duct these are the types of the hymen okay annular hymen could be from hymen septate hymen imperforate hymen and parus parus introitus in which there is absence of the hymen next uh, uh, female reproductive uh, organ is the perineum it is the muscle and the tissue located between the vaginal opening and the anal canal and it supports and surrounds the lower parts of the urinary and digestive tracts the perineum contains an abundance of nerve endings that makes it very sensitive to touch okay and the clinical implication of the perineum is that we make a surgical incision in the surgical incision this is the vagina and this is the perineum we make a surgical incision in this part and during the delivery of the baby to expedite the to widen the uh, birth canal so that the the baby delivers easily that is known as episiotomy so this is the clinical implication of this perineum okay and it it, it should be supported well if it not supported well then get, there can be third degree or fourth degree perineal tear which is very difficult to repair and it causes morbidity to the female so we have to know this general anatomy and details of the perineum will be discussed in your next lecture class uh so th that was all about the external genitalia do we have any questions till now do we have any questions till now about the external genitalia no ma'am so we are all clear about that okay so this is just a review in class so you uh, can just may recall whatever you have studied in your basic classes so next we'll uh, be discussing about the internal genitalia okay the internal genitalia it consists of the vagina cervix uterus fallopian tubes and ovaries okay so these are the internal genitalia it consists of the where is my cursor it consists of the vagina cervix uterus fallopian tubes and ovaries okay so coming to the vagina it is a fibromuscular membrane a sheath which connects the cervix to the it connects this is the vagina it connects the uh, cervix to the external genitalia and it is approximately 8 cm long and and the anterior and posterior wall they oppose each other forming h shaped okay it is located between the 
bladder anteriorly and rectum posteriorly so what is the function of the vagina the function of the vagina is it acts as a passageway for the menstrual blood flow for uterine secretions and also it acts as the birth canal during the labor so these are the functions of the vagina the inner lining of the vagina is made of non keratinized stratified squamous epithelial tissues and the secretion produced by the vaginal epithelium it has acidic ph uh, in order to prevent the growth of bacteria and yeast infections and the mucosa it forms the rugosity okay in the vaginal vaginal wall there are presence of rugosity uh, which are very important if there is loss of rugosity there is it means that there is prolapse okay either anterior wall prolapse or posterior wall prolapse and the vagina has four fornices anterior fornix posterior fornix right fornix and right lateral fornix and left lateral fornices and the posterior fornix is the more deeper one than the anterior fornix and it is as i have said it is s shaped in cross section okay so what are the relations of the vagina the vagina is related anteriorly with the posterior part of the bladder and posteriorly with the uh, rectum and the sigmoid colon okay and then laterally in upper part there is mackenroth's ligament or the cardinal ligaments with the uterine vessels ureter and uh, laterally there are subcutaneous fats and this is the levator ani okay and the in lower part it is related to the bulbous spongiosus muscle so these are the relations of the vagina so what is the blood supply of the vagina the blood supply of the vagina it is supplied by the anterior branch of the uh, interrect uh, iliac artery that is the uterine artery vaginal artery middle rectal artery and internal pudendal artery so this is the uterine artery this is the vaginal part of the uterine artery supplies the vagina okay uterine branch of uh, vaginal branch of the uterine artery vaginal artery middle rectal artery and internal pudendal artery and the venous drainage is into the internal iliac veins and the internal pudendal veins okay so this is the internal pudendal veins and this is the internal iliac veins coming to the lymphatics the upper one third of the vagina uh, the lymphatics drain into the internal iliac group the middle one third okay. it drains into the internal iliac group and below the hymen it drains into the superficial inguinal group and the nerve supply is by pelvic plexus on the pudendal nerve okay see the it drains upper part drains internal iliac lymph nodes sacral lymph nodes and lower part it uh, it drains into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes so this is the nerve supply okay so uh, cervix is also a part of the uterus but it is a very important organ of the internal genitalia so that's why we are discussing it separately uh, cervix is part of uterus okay it is not different but then because of its clinical implications we are discussing this cervix separately okay the cervix it connects the uh, the parts of uterus are fundus body and the cervix okay and uh, because of the clinical implications i'll be discussing detailly in the the cervix the cervix it connects the uh, uterus to the vagina uh, and it is 2 to 3 cm long and roughly cylindrical and in nulliparous this is the nulliparous cervix the external os it looks like a pinhole okay it is like a pinhole whereas the parous os parous means the lady who have delivered it uh, the parous os it looks like it uh, slit like okay and uh, this uh, cervix has endocervix this is the endocervix and this is the ectocervix the endocervix is uh, simple columnar and the ectocervix it is stratified squamous and uh, in between is the squamo columnar junction this is where we detect the pre malignant lesions of cervix by doing the pap smear for cervical cancer screening okay and the cervix has two portions okay Por the one portion which uh, comes out in the vagina that is porcho vaginalis and another one is inside that is supra vaginalis that is above the uh, above the this is the above the vagina okay so this is how it looks in speculum examination okay this is the squamous columnar junction columnar epithelium squamous epithelium 
okay this is the internal os this is the external os so the relations of the cervix uh, anteriorly the cervix is related to the base of the bladder posteriorly sigmoid colon and then uh, laterally laterally there are mackinrod ligament along with uterine uh, vessels and the uh, ureter okay so these are the relations of the anteriorly uh, anteriorly pubo cervical ligament and posteriorly pouch of douglas or recto sigmoid uh, fascia okay and so this uterus has as i've said it has fundus the uppermost part of the uterus is known as the fundus okay and this is the body and this is the cervix so the parts of the uterus are fundus body the narrowest part of the uterus uh, that is the, that lies between the body and cervix is the isthmus and the clinical implication of isthmus is that uh, during pregnancy as the uterus grows the isthmus uh, there is uptaking of the cervix and it forms the lower uterine segment okay it forms the lower uterine segment during the pregnancy and the dimensions of the uterus are 8 cm into 5 cm into 1.25 cm the uterine wall is made up of three layers the outer one is the perimetrium the middle is the myometrium and inner one is the endometrium okay and the blood supply of uh, uterus are uterine arteries which is the anterior division of the internal iliac arteries and also ovarian arteries from the abdominal aorta inferior to the renal arteries so the relations of the uterus uh, we all know anteriorly is the bladder posteriorly is the uh, uh, rectum okay posteriorly is rectum laterally these are the broad ligaments in upper portion there is the ovarian uh, ligament along with the tubes okay tubes ovaries laterally in the upper portion with the ovarian ligament laterally there is the infundibular pelvic ligament this is the broad ligament Uh, which contains subcutaneous fat and on vessels and the lower portion is the mackinrod ligament with the ureter uh, anteriorly the pubo cervical ligament and posteriorly there is the uterosacral ligament so these are the relations of the uterus okay these are the relations of the uterus this is the uterovesical fold okay this portion the, does not have the peritoneum whereas posteriorly it is covered the body of the uterus until cervix is covered by the peritoneum from the recto uterine pouch or the pouch of douglas okay anteriorly this is the uterovesical fold so this is peritoneum free layer here we this is the this is the place where we separate the uterovesical fold and we shift the bladder down during the cesarean section we identify the lower uterine segment by this is the place where there is the lower uterine segment we identify this vesical uterine pouch or vesical uterine fold we lift it and then we cut it and then push the bladder down and in this place we give incision in the lower segment cesarean section okay so the blood supply of ut uh, uterus we have said uterine artery and ovarian arteries branch from the uh, uh, abdominal aorta okay and this uh, and in uh, inside the uterus the uterine artery it divides into arcuate artery which gives branch to as the radial artery and then in turn it gives the spiral or coil arteries okay and then it gives the capillaries okay so these are the uh, division of the uterine artery and uh, And we, in the pregnancy, in the pregnancy, the pregnancy as the endometrium thickens, this uh, capillaries they they cannot enlarge. Okay, okay. The, the, the thickness of the endometrium it increases, whereas the uterine supply they cannot prolong. So that's why, and because of the, because there is devoid of the vascularity, decrease in blood supply. So the portion which do not get the blood supply they shed there is endometrial shed, shedding causing the menstruation so we have to know this anatomy clear so the lymphatic drainage lymphatic drainage of the uterus uh the from the round this is the round ligament from the round ligament it goes to the external iliac lymph nodes and above the round ligament or above the tubes uh, it goes to the aortic lymph nodes and here around the surface it goes to the paracervical lymph nodes sacral lymph nodes and internal iliac lymph nodes okay coming to the nerve supply the sympathetic supply is by motor t5 t6 and sensory is by t10 to l1 and the parasympathetic supply is by pelvic nerves s2 s3 s4 ending in ganglia of frankenhauser so 
the spelling name will be you know, as i've said discussed later and coming to the next internal genitalia the very important one after the uterus is the ovaries the ovaries are the female gonads okay or the sex glands they develop and expel an ovum each month every month there is uh, the small graphene follicle they uh, produce a dominant follicle which leads to the graphene follicle and then it ruptures ovulation takes place and then there is release of ovum each month if it is fertilized then uh, there is implantation thickening of the endometrium and then pregnancy occurs uh, then if it does not if 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 there is no fertilization then there is formation of the corpus luteum okay uh, it is approximately 2 into 4 cm and the long axis runs vertically and are attached to the posterior leaf of the broad ligament by the meso ovarium and it is fixed in position by the ovarian ligament medially and the infundibular pelvic ligament laterally the circulation blood supply is by ovarian artery and vein so this is the histology okay initially there are primordial follicles okay primordial follicles and then uh, they form primary follicles then uh, they form the granulosa cell which has oocyte secondary follicle okay and then uh, it forms the mature follicle dominant follicle then there is ovulation this is the ovulation ovulated with corona radiata then if it is there is no pregnancy it forms the developing corpus luteum this is the frank uh, full blown corpus luteum formation okay and uh, this part is known as medulla and this is the the covering is known as the tunica albuginea okay cortex there is cortex and medulla in cord and it is covered by the tunica albuginea the medulla consists of mesoverum and the blood vessels okay so next is the fallopian tube or the uterine tube or the oviduct it is a delicate tubular structure it is a delicate tubular structure which carry the ovum or the sperm between the ovary and the uterine cavity it has delicate cilia so this is the uh, fallopian tube it has delicate cilia which helps in this is the fimbria of the tube it helps in picking of the ovum and then here um, after the ejaculation and the sperm goes here and because of the cilia the uh, true and fro movement of the cilia the sperm and uh, ovum they meet in this tube okay it is 10 cm into 1 cm situated in the mesosalpinx and its parts are in the inside the uterus the part which is inside the uterus is known as interstitial part this is the isthmic part ampullary part and the infundibular part this is the femoral part the narrowest part is the interstitial part okay so coming to the uterine uh, uterine tube histology it is ciliated and non ciliated simple columnar epithelium uh, the ciliary movement and periodic peristalsis contraction move the ova as i've already told you and there is secretion of the nutrient substance in the tubes so the artery supply is the branches of the uterine and ovarian arteries and the nerve supply is both by the sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers the sensory fibers run from thoracic segments t11 to t12 and the lumbar segment l1 and the lymphatic drainage is by the iliac and lateral aortic nodes okay so that was about fallopian tubes next important um, organ of the female genital system is the bladder Okay. okay bladder it is situated immediately behind the pubic bone and anterior to the uterine cervix and upper vagina uh, it is composed of strong muscular wall consisting of three layers of interlacing fibers which are known together as the tetracer muscles and the trigone is the only smooth part of the bladder as it is fixed to the underlying muscle and at the superior margins of the trigone lie the ureteric openings and at the inferior aspect of the ureter so this is the trigone this is the ureteral opening okay and this is the ureteral opening this is the opening of the ureters okay the blood supply is by the superior and inferior vesical arteries which originate from the internal iliac artery and the nerve supply is by the inferior hypogastric plexus uh, sympathetic nerves l1 and l2 ganglia and parasympathetic supply is by the splanchnic nerves of s2 s3 and s4 
And next is the urethra. Uh, it measures around female urethra is shorter than the male urethra. That's why UTIs are more common in females than in males. And it measures 4 cm into 6 mm. The mucous membrane is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium and it becomes transitional near the bladder. Okay, it becomes transitional near the bladder. This is the urethra. And the uh, proximal part is uh, supplied by the inferior vesicle branch and the still part is supplied by the internal pudendal artery and it drains into the internal pudendal veins and the lymphatics is drained by the superficial inguinal lobes near the meatus and internal and external iliac nodes. The pelvic ureter, the uh, length of the pelvic ureter is 25 to 30 centimeter. The abdominal and pelvic portions are almost equal in length, and the total length of ureter is 25 to 30 centimeters. Same boy, you know? The, pel the course of the pelvic ureter in the pelvis. In the pelvis, the ureter runs medially and parallel with the internal iliac artery, and then it crosses over the it crosses over the ureter that is water under the bridge, and remaining two thirds of the ureter it passes through the cardinal ligaments into the bladder. Okay, so this is the course of the pelvic ureter. It will be asked to you in your uh, theory question. So uh, the course of pelvic ureter is very important. Okay. So, so this is the pelvic ureter, okay? This is the pelvic ureter going into the bladder. See? From goes parallelly and then laterally and then it goes inside the, through the isthmus, it goes inside the bladder. So ureter is comparatively constituted at three places, where it crosses the pelvic rim, where it is crossed by the uterine vessels and in the intravesical part. So these are the three, these are the three constricted part or narrowest part of the ureter. Okay. So this is the ureter crossing the uterine artery, see, forming the bridge. Okay. So while doing TAH, we have to be, we have to stay as close as possible to the uh, uterus so that we do not damage the ureter. Okay, ureter has to be visualized well and then it has to be separated before doing hysterectomy. There is high chance of damaging the ureter if you go far away from the uterus. Okay, so we stay as close as possible to the uterus. The blood supply is by the uh, segmental blood supply from nearly all the visceral branches of the anterior divisions of the internal iliac artery and the venous drainage corresponds to the arteries and the lymphatics is from the lower part drain into the external and internal iliac lymph nodes and then upper part in the lumbar lymph nodes. Okay, and nerve supply sympathetic is by hypoplastic and pelvic plexus and parasympathetic supply is by the sacral plexus. So these are all about the uh, anatomy of the uterus. Another another uh, one important is the supports of the uterus. Okay, uterus is supported by, um, which I have not mentioned here, is the supports of the uterus. Okay, it will be asked to you in your uh, questions, unique question. What are the supports? There is there is upper tire, middle tire, and inferior tire. Okay, upper tire is by this uh, tubo ovarian ligament, infundibular pelvic ligament, and the middle tire is by the broad ligaments and the connective tissues, and the lower tire is by the upper tire, my round ligament, and the lower tire, ma, there is uh, cardinal ligaments or the mackinac ligament, anteriorly pubic cervical ligament, and posteriorly there is sacral uh, ligament. Okay. So these are the supports of the uterus. So you have to also know the supports of the uterus. Uh, this is all about the female anatomy of the female genital system. If you have any questions, you can ask. Three minutes, Bagi Do we have any questions? Do you have any questions? If you have any questions, you can ask. No, no, no. Are we clear? This is just a brief revision of the general anatomy. You can, or you have to, you have to know the anatomy before you learn the clinical implications and before you see the operations, before you know, study about the operations, okay? So anatomy is very important and you should know the clinical implications, okay? If you have any questions, you can ask me, by me or email me, I can reply you there, okay? 
if you do not have questions that is all for today's class thank you everyone thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am ma we study about this anatomy okay and next time i think next class you have uh, the anatomy of the perineum it is a little complicated so uh, revise perineum before you attend your next class okay okay ma'am take your leave now thank you everyone